VR really started, if you think about it, with this children's toy about 75 years ago. It's a Viewmaster that takes you to all different places. We all remember them from when we were kids. But then recently, you had um, the low end. This is Google Cardboard, basically, and this will take you, you know, on 360 degree video experiences around the world. Higher up the food chain, you have something like this. This was developed by Samsung with Oculus. It's called the Gear VR, and it uses a Samsung smartphone as its window onto the world. As you keep going further up the chain, you get the Oculus Rift, which is the, the company's new headset that retails for about $600, plus the cost of a PC to run it, as well as the HTC Vive and the Sony PlayStation VR, which is used with the Sony PlayStation. The earlier iterations of VR failed for a number of reasons. They failed to deliver on the hype. They would make people sick, they wouldn't seem all that real, they'd be too expensive, etc. And then the internet came along and everybody just sort of forgot about VR. Until Facebook bought Oculus for about $2 billion in, in 2014. And that sort of changed everything. It signaled to the marketplace that there was a lot of money here. It also told the investment community that Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg believed there was a great opportunity here. There are basically three different flavors of VR. There's virtual reality, which through the use of a headset transports you somewhere that you are not. There's augmented reality or AR. Think of it as Google Glass. It puts information onto reality, enables you to see something that is invisible. And then there's mixed reality. Mixed reality is something that Microsoft is after with the HoloLens. You'll, you can look at actual reality, but it can put a holographic image on top of reality and present to you information that is otherwise invisible. Clearly the first iterations of VR are in gaming, um, but the, I think the real excitement about it long term, when people talk about this being a platform on the order of the mobile phone or even the internet itself, that sort of presupposes that it's going to be much bigger than gaming. And of course, in reporting my story, I visited Lockheed Martin in Orlando. Now, Lockheed invests a lot of money in VR. They train soldiers through VR. It's a lot less expensive and it can be just as effective. NASA is helping its engineers figure out how to fix satellites, for example. You have car companies that are using it as a way, as a virtual test drive. You have um, retailers that are helping people figure out how to redesign their homes or how to shop or visit, you know, bring catalogs to life, for example. So really the applications are, are really pretty far ranging. They're all very new. Everybody's trying to figure out the rules of engagement, but there's a lot of money and effort going into it. 